Fragrant is the hala and the lehua. I dwell here in a house fashioned of their living branches, the walls thatched with the swirling mist of the mountains. I dwell here waiting, yearning for your arrival. For you do not come alone. You come with a traveling companion whose name is love. Mahalo so much for coming and being part of this TEDx and Hilo sustainability forum where we'll explore ways to achieve sustainability and abundance. Epule kako. Mahalo ke akua, creative force for bringing together people who want to take care of this creation, this world, this va'a, this canoe that sails to the ocean of space, carrying each one of us, a crew member, each of us, whether we intend or not, an important part of the crew of this va'a, of this canoe. Mahalo for bringing us together so that we can safely arrive at the destination, wherever it is. You know, I was privileged to go to a, uh, a, a talk by Chad Paishan, who works with Nakalai Va'a, one of the voyaging groups. And he, um, he talked about the island is a canoe and the canoe is an island. And I thought that was such a beautiful concept and so in keeping with our ancestors, our kupuna. You know, many of us have kupuna ancestors from around the world. Now, as local people, whenever we meet, what's the first thing we do? We introduce ourselves not, oh, I'm Lele Hua Yuan, pleased to meet you, what's your name? But are you related to so-and-so from out Pi'ihono West Side? That's how we, we establish these connections. Oh, and that's the family that came here from um, New Mexico, right? Right, your great-grandma was from New Mexico, and she married so-and-so who was. So instead of giving the formal introduction, I'm going to ask you to help me give my mo'oku ohau, my genealogy. So you kind of have a little idea of my background, my ancestry, and why this, uh, uh, this synergy is so precious to my heart. So everybody bring their snapping fingers. Mine, I have tendonitis in my fingers, so I can't snap anymore. So I need you to help me out. And, and, two, and, four, and, nice beat. And, six, and, good. Speaking Cantonese, they came, married Polynesian girls, and their children did the same, but to the mainland's golden curls. Then they came back to these isles to raise these children's children here. Now at home we sit to eat with chopsticks, poi, and German beer. Afterwards, we dance all night. Chinese drum and hula sway, strumming a guitar from Spain, Pakini bass from USA. Suitors come from far away, seeking love mates of this blend. When the Irish fiddle plays, we know the story never ends. Mahalo. Fabulous, fabulous backup. You're all going to go on tour with me next year, right? Great. So we've come from around the world to this, this moku, this cut off piece of land that's right here in the middle of the Pacific Basin. How beautiful. These islands, a thousand years ago, were a sustainable, abundant community. We didn't have Matson, we didn't have Young Brothers, we didn't have United Airlines, we didn't even have Aloha Air or Hawaiian. And Aloha's gone away now. So we had whatever was here, we had to use. So sustainability is nothing new. It's what we as island people are all about. 
And that's why I'm so glad that the TEDx presentation is here in Hilo now. When I was a little girl, being raised by my grandparents, you know, Hawaiian style, the parents got to go to work every day. They don't have as much time to focus on small kids. So the grandparents raised their kids. All that wonderful talk that came out of uh, Washington. Which president's wife was it? It takes a village to raise a child. We were already doing it right here. It's part of our Hawaiian culture. My grandparents used to tell me, whenever I would be caught leaving the water running, uh, ole, we were on catchment. If I left the toothpaste cap off, oh, get the, um, the cockroach can eat the toothpaste. Ew, then you got to squeeze out extra, clean it off. You're wasting. Anytime something got wasted, my grandmother's voice, I can still hear it today. Use it up. Wear it out. Make it do or do without. Can we all repeat that? Use it up. Wear it out. Make it do or do without. That's sustainability. There's an old Hawaiian saying, if you waste food, someday it will laugh at you. You'll find yourself wishing that you hadn't wasted that pork chop that just sat in the fridge, sat in the fridge, got all nasty, put it in the compost pile. Oh, can I put it in the compost even then it'll attract rats. Give it to, the, oh, I can't feed it to the dog. It's got a sharp bone. It's wasted. Poho is the Hawaiian word. So Hawaiian culture came from the idea of utilizing resources as best as you could so that they would always be there for the future. The kapu system. You know, Hollywood has this idea that the kapu system is all about throwing virgins in the volcano. I'm sorry, Hawaiians are smarter than that. We have much better uses for beautiful virgins than throwing them in a volcano. That's part of sustainability, is knowing what to do with your virgins. <laughs> the kapu system was a sustainable codification of laws that were felt to have been given to us by the gods and spoken to us by our chiefs. The kapu system regulated things like when you could fish, when you don't fish, when to gather the limu, when to plant. All of these things were regulated by the kapu. And if you broke the kapu, if you fished when you should not be fishing, the gods would be very angry, it was felt. And the gods would take the fish away. Well, if I look at the fisheries situation today, I'd say the gods are really bent out of shape with us. You know, fish are disappearing around the world because we're not observing the natural cycle. You know, our ancestors were very smart people. They observed how nature interacted and they utilized that to create the system of laws. And this existed in ancient Ireland. You know, the life of the land was in the hands of the chief. If the land was not regulated properly, the chief was executed. He got to go and explain to the gods for himself why things weren't working out well. So these land-based traditional cultures, including Hawaii, were very much sustainable. They have so many lessons to give us, so many lessons that we can bring forward. And as Chad likes to teach, you know, the island is a canoe, the canoe is an island. By extension, the world is a canoe. And we're all on it together. We're all crew members. We all pull together, paddling or handling the rigging, whatever it takes. I'm going to need, just to give you know, physical things, set lessons so much better in our minds. I'm going to ask for two really strong young men to come and help me out here. Do I see two really strong young men? Do I see two really strong young men? Okay, I guess they're very shy, so I'll take two less, less shy strong young men. Okay, we've got two right there. So I'm, we're going to play a little tug of war. You grab that. This side. Yeah. Anyway, any direction, just don't fall over my basket and pull. Oh, yeah. oh, usually the leaf breaks by now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we've got a broken leaf. Okay, we'll break this leaf too. My hands aren't that strong, so I have to wrap. Oh, a little bit of leaf came off there. 
Okay, I should have gone for weaker leaves. Anyway, you're going to grab that one and you'll come over here and hold this one. And I'm going to start, each hold one of those leaves. And I'm going to start twisting these leaves together. When I was a little girl, I used to love to play with my dad's racehorse. He had a racehorse named Scotch and Soda. And when I was supposed to be feeding and watering it, I would take it and I would go and ride him and pretend I was racing. One day the horse bucked me off and I was so upset. I forgot what I had done with his lead rope. I went running to tell a grown up what had happened and who do you think I ran to? Not my dad. Oh no. Ran to my grandfather. My grandfather said, baby, go out and pick tea leaf. And I'm thinking, the horse just ran away. Why have I got to go clean yard? Is that my punishment? And while I was picking tea leaf, my grandfather went and got a saucepan and put my breakfast oatmeal in it and went out and started shaking it, going, come, 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 come. And the horse heard and smelled that oatmeal and his ears went up and he looked around and came trotting right up to my grandfather. My grandfather, meanwhile, had me twisting this tea leaf rope. And one tea leaf wouldn't have been much good with a horse. But each leaf wrapped together formed a strong rope that we brought the horse home with. So we all work together. We can make a rope out of ourselves of the rigging. We can do much more work than people working separately. So mahalo for coming to join together to make a beautiful tea leaf rope for TEDx.